This video is brought to you by the 3 Minute Board Game Patrons. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. Kia ora koutou and welcome to V Sabotage in about 3 minutes. Review copy used. Review also features components from expansions. It has a solo mode. It's a game for one to four players, playing time is medium to long, and it's a moderately complex game. It's World War II and you are in charge of a small group of commandos striking deep behind enemy lines. Can you master stealth and maneuver in order to stick it to Hitler and his fascist regime? The map ends if you complete the stated goals and escape via a tunnel. You may need to complete multiple maps to win the mission. You lose if all your commandos are killed. Variable player powers. Each commando has unique powers and are double-sided. Dice. Combat and stealth is resolved with dice. Player turn. First select one of the missions. It will show you how many commandos you need and how long the game will take. Look at the mission card and its special rules and then set up the first map. Shaded tiles are inside tiles. Also place down doors, reinforcement entry points, alarms, tunnels, any starting equipment, objectives and one trooper to guard each triangle marker. The board is made up of large, medium and small tiles. Tile size impacts a lot of rules. Then select the number of commandos for the mission and take their models. On your turn, each commando will have three action points. It costs one action to move on to a small tile and one one action to move on to a medium tile if you don't mind being revealed. If you want to stay hidden however, it costs two actions. Picking up items in your area is a free action. The sniper takes the same actions as the officer, and then the scout, whose special abilities are cheaper stealthy movement, moves one extra space. Let's jump to the next turn. You start each round by drawing an event card. This one gives one commando an extra action token. Now the officer is stealthy here, which means they can spend one action to kill the guard, who drops a random item token. The second and third actions are to move onto the small tiles. The final tile has a guard on it, so we make a stealth roll. This result is a failure. Our officer is revealed and the alarm is now sounding. The officer has the plus one action token from the event so takes a fourth action to shoot their gun, rolling two dice. The number needed to hit is shown on the tile. He rolls one over four and removes the enemy. This was a noisy attack but as the alarm is already sounding you don't need to worry too much about that. The sniper then acts and moves to the alarm tile and deactivates it. You may only disable the alarm once per map. The scout then sneaks into this room, makes a stealth roll and eliminates the guard, then spends their final action into with the objective. Once all players are done, place one enemy token on each tile by a spawn point, and place two if the alarm is currently sounding. Then all enemies move based on the direction shown on the event card. If they come across a revealed commando, they will attack, rolling the number of dice shown on them. Each hit does a wound, and each wound reduces the number of actions a commando can take. End the mission by completing objectives and escaping into a tunnel. Why would you like this game? Now in the video I use tokens for simplicity's sake, but this game also has a miniatures expansion which gives the game a very different feel. The sabotage superficially looks a bit like Zombicide until you realize it's no chaotic dice chucker. No, V Sabotage is a precision game and it's very much a puzzle where each level is a challenge to be solved. And your characters and their wide variety of potential equipment gives you lots of ways to approach each level. For example, one of my favorite little things is using a crowbar to block a spawn point for a turn. In addition, the expansions offer long form campaign play. The well, best thing about this game is being revealed in a room of bad guys. It's an immediate death sentence. However, this game is a tightrope and the best way to play is to try to plan out as much of your turn as possible in advance. And as a result, I believe it's best suited for solo play as with three to four players, you don't get to do much on your turn. And just an aside comment, this is how zombie survival games should work and I'm surprised there isn't a zombie game like this. For a different take on stealth, try Clank in Space. And to go in guns blazing, try Aliens Another Glorious Day in the Core. V Sabotage. The V is for victory. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share and subscribe to the channel.